What is good, YouTube? This is the FF Dynasty coming at you. Thank you so much for tuning in. Be sure to subscribe, like, and comment below with either love or if you're feeling like some hate, throw some shade down there. Either way, it all greatly helps us out so we can keep bringing you new content. Next question is, uh, we, we're really big on Clyde Edwards. I think, you know, the fantasy community is either really high or some people are just like, I don't get it. And reading the RSP, we saw that you had a, a couple of guys ranked ahead of him that maybe some other people wouldn't quite have him ahead of him. What, what was your process and thoughts behind that? Yeah. Um, the big thing, too, is that I'm a big proponent of tiers more than I am about binary rankings. So to me, we hate rankings as well. Yeah. Yeah. My, my chapter says why rankings suck, but we have to do them anyway. You know, and I I, sho- I try and shove that down everybody's throats because I, if I have to do them, I, I want you to know I can't stand it. <laughs> well, why do you have Clyde Edwards rank so lower than these other guys? Yeah. Exactly, exactly. And it's and it's more to me about the final score. And the score for Clyde Edwards Hilaire for me is a is a contributing starter or rotation. I think it's I always get con- the two tier titles I have confused, but it's a I believe it's a, a rotational starter. And a rotational starter is a guy who's gonna be on the field, he's gonna get an opportunity to play r- routinely. Um and he's and he's someone that if you put him in the right system where you tailor it to his strengths as a receiver and and certain zone schemes and he has the talent around him to where um you, you know he doesn't have to work extra hard to try and get every yard i think he's the type of guy that could be very productive in the league right away um but there are also guys that just happen to grade out a little bit higher and it was the difference of maybe a combination of two different scores, you know, different criteria grades that gave them a little bit of a higher grade than what Clyde Edwards Hilaire got. And and so for me, he's in that second tier of backs um, that that I would look on the board. So if he's in tier two and you have, you know, five or six players in tier two and your tier one is, you know, for me is probably, you know, J.K. Dobbins and 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 Jonathan Taylor, then then any, you know, if you like Edwards Hilaire more, I, I'm not going to argue with you about taking him, even if I have him, you know, sixth or seventh compared to the guy I have third or fourth, because it's that close. And it just depends all it's going to depend on fit with the team more than anything. I think, I think that's pretty fair. So it, I have a question. If, if you're, if you're in a rookie draft, I'm assuming you play dynasty football, right? Right. This Pretty much, that's most of the stuff right. I do these days. Uh, how could how could you not? Um, right. So if 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 you weigh the tiers more so than the rankings per se, and you're in a PPR league, would that bump Clyde Edwards up above maybe another guy that you have you know ranked over him uh, because of the the catch passing pass catching ability? It might if it's um, depends on the team. You know, for instance. You know, I like A.J. Dillon, and I think he's rated – I have him rated over Clyde edwards Hilaire right now. If A.J. Dillon goes to a team where it's mostly – he's going to mostly run the ball, I think, and he's not going to be as much – he's not going to get a, as many checkdowns, and the run the run game there doesn't have a really strong offensive line. But Edwards goes to – edwards Hilaire goes to a team that where he's going to get a, a lot of passes thrown his way. Say he goes to New England. They just decide for whatever reason – you know, well, maybe not New England or the Chiefs. He goes, maybe they goes he, to the Chiefs. He goes to the Chiefs, or he goes he goes to the Buccaneers. Tampa Bay. Yeah. And yeah. Tom Brady makes him his James White plus type of player. Plus, yeah, of plus. course, yeah, exactly. Then I'm gonna then I'm gonna absolutely take Clyde Edwards Hilaire higher than where I would you know take AJ Dillon. But if AJ Dillon's going to the Baltimore Ravens, and right. there and you know that Mark Ingram is like saying goodbye, you know they're gonna he's, say goodbye. He's to moonlight Mark and he's twilight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or, or he goes to the Titans and they just franchise the big guy, but he could walk next year because they don't want to give him all the money and they bring in, he's right behind him, Derrick Henry, you know? Yeah, Which exactly. That's is, perfect. Then, yeah, it's like, you know, blow that truck horn and get ready to go because that's what's <laughs> going to happen with, you know, with Dylan. I'll wait a year on that. Yeah. Well, I, I appreciate think that's, that. I'm sorry, Kate. I appreciate no, that scheme fit means something to you because scheme fit means a lot to Casey and I and Jay and myself. Like we, I like the part where you the RSP is football first, and then you put a fantasy spin on it. Obviously, we're a fantasy football podcast, but we like to talk football. And then we turn we we talk trades, we talk rookie drafts, we talk we talk fantasy football, but we're going to talk football first and foremost. 
and all that the scheme fit comes into play. You take a player like AJ Dillon and you put him Baltimore Ravens is perfect. I was thinking Titans, but you put him in one of those systems, you know, a guy that's made to carry the ball is about to carry the ball. Yeah. Or if he goes somewhere else where you're like, oh, this play that there's bad franchises and they they just you don't know why this team even picked that player. They don't do that. This yeah. offense doesn't run the ball like that, and they picked that player. You don't know why they did that. You know, yeah. Put Corey Dillon side saddle of Deshaun Watson in Houston's offense, and I'm like, <laughs> I, I'll easily take Clyde Edwards Alaire anywhere else. All right, you know? we're moving Clyde up the board. I feel like, do you, yes. Do you feel like that you can? And as far as maybe fantasy, or I guess you could apply it in regular football. Do you feel like you could uh, maybe overrate landing spots sometimes? Like you know, everyone was upset that. AJ Brown landed in Tennessee and then, you know, you see it kind of quickly turn around Chubb and in the Browns, you see it kind of quickly turn around. Can you get maybe a little too caught up in that sometimes? Or or how do you feel about that? You absolutely can. And those are good examples that worked out for me because I actually had Brown as my, as I said, I, I wrote last year that he was a great fit in Tennessee, despite what anybody had to say and, and explained why um, because of the slot factor and the fact that, Mariota and both Tannehill shared um, the slot receiver that they slot love that that they both had who <laughs> had his one of his most productive careers and I can't remember his name he's out of the league now but he played in Miami and Tennessee and had his best years with both those guys for like a two three year span and I'm thinking how do you not how are you not going to love the fact that he plays inside and he's going to get a lot of these looks and he'll get inside and outside opportunities but Richard right. Matthews. Matthews, Richard Jordan. Matthews. Yeah, yeah. Richard that Matthews. was it. Richard <laughs> cool. Matthews. Thank you. Hot and heavy on that guy for a while. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But I mean, again, you know, this was to to me that makes sense. But again, it is. If you can get you can get enamored too much with a, a certain fit, and part of that does have to come down to whether or not it's just because he enters the the team as a starter. Like people may look at it and say, oh man, David Montgomery has a clear track to become a starter for the Bears. And that's great. Well, if, you know, as the season goes on and you see that the offensive line isn't healthy. Terrible and, and Mitchell that Trubisky, doesn't process well. Yeah, then it's, then it's not good. Or if Miles Sanders, if, you know, Miles Sanders was more if of a gap runner. <laughs> If they're extinct with running backs at the end of the year, Miles Sanders is going to get every opportunity plus good coaching. Like you yeah. got Peterson and you have a great running backs coach there. I mean, you can't put, you know, I don't think enough people look at things like that either. Yeah. And he got better, you know, yeah, he, he, he got did. better for sure. But at the beginning of the year, he couldn't run, he couldn't run zone scheme. And so they had to, they had to implement gap for him. And we it called him an athlete playing the running back position who never had to learn how to play the running back See, position because he was kind of yeah. out at like, Kind of like maybe he was the seventh grader who was shaven early. He never, he was always the best yeah. athlete. So he maybe never had to yeah. learn some of the nuances, but he definitely grew as a runner. Yeah. Um, yeah. Tevin Coleman was that way in Atlanta. I got criticized. I remember because I said Tevin Coleman wasn't a very good outside zone runner. And I remember somebody was saying, I heard somebody, somebody told me secondhand that someone was criticizing that take because he ran outside zone at Indiana. And I'm like, yeah, but running outside zone at Indiana and having two successful runs against Ohio State for 150 yards while you had another 15 that weren't any good wasn't going to project well for the NFL for you. And it's going to take him some time. And they actually implemented gap plays that first year in Atlanta for him in Mike Shanahan's, Kyle Shanahan's offense. Kyle Shanahan went, I mean, now he's running gap and all sorts of stuff now. But sure, right. he, at the time, it was just outside zone. And and it took it took Coleman two to three years to really become a better um, zone runner, and and now he's competent at the very least. All yeah, right. if he could just stay healthy. Mm. Yeah.